as you can see, we have some of our artists already joining us to hear here today. We have uh, Chor on the screen and also Jake, and we'll be inviting a few of the others on in just a bit here as well. This is episode six of our season two, and we've got some amazing speakers on board. Each of these speakers and panels will be showing up to share important information and their take on the psychedelic renaissance. So our webinar series is run by MAPS Canada, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. And at MAPS, we're on the forefront of conducting studies to develop psychedelics into safe and legal medical treatments since our formation to conduct and publish scientific research and education supporting the beneficial use of psychedelic medicines, MAPS relies on public donations and fundraising initiatives. So the funds raised from this webinar series will go to fund that research. And we thank you very much for tuning in uh, because it is very important work that we have ahead. So just a few housekeeping items here. We are going to have a panel of artists um, that you see some of them on screen already here. And then we're going to go through a few questions with them. Feel free to ask any questions that you would like for the artists in the ask a question box. So you can see them down at the bottom there and then make sure and tell us where you're from in the chat. So we already have some people tuning in from all over the world. Where do we have here? Montreal, we have Pemberton. We have Guelph, we have Ontario, Vancouver, Whitehorse, Brampton, Calgary, Australia, Waterloo. Where else do we have here? Make sure and let us know where you're from. Nelson, BC, uh, Toronto, another one from Montreal, Gibsons, Palm Springs. Uh, where else? Westminster, Barrie, so all over. And our artists are actually tuning in from all over the world as well. So we have a nice uh, global um, webinar here tonight. So I'm going to run through the artist bios and then we're going to welcome the artists uh, back on, on screen here. So the first artist that is joining us today is an artist in our last series as well. His name is Chris Dyer. Chris Dyer is a Peruvian Canadian artist based in Montreal, Quebec, who exhibits, performs, and teaches his art worldwide. Some of his broader artistic themes include consciousness, truth, oneness, introspection, personal development, and kindness. He paints using acrylic pen pencil, pen, spray paint, gouache, and other media on a variety of different forms, including broken or blank skateboards in his early years, various sculpted and recycled items, and now commonly fabric or wood canvas. He's also known for his murals, logos, album covers, posters, illustrations, comic books, travel diaries, the Sunlight Chronicles, and YouTube adventures, blogs, art ventures. He was the art director and brand manager of Creation Skateboards, Satori Movement, for three and a half years, creating designs for hundreds of skateboard decks, and he teaches many art workshops and classes on technique, spray painting, traditional medicine, medicinal healing, and the business of art, as well as on offering online classes. He's created his own brand of conscious clothing and other goods, Positive Creations, which features some of his most well-loved art through his styles, mediums, and subject matter are always in the flow. The main theme seen through his artwork is cultural and spiritual oneness of humanity and beyond. So we'll be seeing Chris here on screen in a few moments. We also have with us today, Jake Cobrin. The work of Jake Coburn is psychedelic, unusual, dark, beautiful, and elegant. His work seeks to illuminate experiences which Jake has had that are outside the realm of norm normal waking consciousness, moving into numinous and visionary realms with natural ease. His work explores the interplay of shadow and light, both in the delicate modeling of the forms of his pictures, but also in the character of the subjects he portrays. His work showing a willingness to embrace all aspects of emotion from revelation to peace to fear and disharmony. He considers himself interdimensional midwife and conduit, believing that the role of the artist is to be able to move outside of themselves and act as a conduit for higher consciousness to move through them. In this way, he says, I do not claim authorship for any of the works or art I've painted. I'm a channel for great spirit to take through me, to create through me. He currently lives in Ubud, Bali, and he grew up in San Francisco. He is one of the few psychedelic artists with formal classical art education, having studied classical realist drawing and painting in Florence, Italy, at the Angel Academy of, of, Academy of Art. He's also a tattoo artist and is inspired by the traditional ceremonial context and 
ancient cultures held around tattooing. He's honored to bring people through the ancient rite of passage to, of being tattooed in a way that is intentional and reverent. Besides painting and tattooing, Jake is also the founder and designer of a jewelry and fashion brand called Medicine Dragon Designs. And is a DJ musician, as well as a tattoo artist, published writer, speaker, and podcaster. So next we have Amanda Sage. Amanda is an artist driven by the desire to reveal arts critical role in regenerative, regenerative culture. A celebrated visionary artist, she is a citizen of the world, exhibiting in galleries, art fairs, and festivals, as well as lecturing and teaching worldwide at places such as the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors in New York, Paradise One in Australia, and the event Vienna Academy of Visionary Art in Austria. A contemporary nomad, she is passionate about artistic social experiments, such as the WK, excuse me if I pronounce this wrong, WUK in Vienna, Burning Man, and Bridging Worlds uh, for Creating Flourishing. The vision train embodies her passion for art and community, creating a platform for experimentation to support individuals and communities in creative solitary, solutionary activism. So we have two artists left to introduce here, and the next one is Chor Boogie. Chor Bui, aka Niangu, is a critically acclaimed spray paint artist. His visionary murals and art exhibitions have appeared all over the globe, including venues such as Beijing 2008 Olympic Games, the Smithsonian Museum of Public Arts in Baton Rouge, Museum of Art Puerto Rico, LA Art Fair, Scope Art Fair Miami Beach, Torrance Art Museum in Los Angeles, Museum of Contemporary Art in San Francisco, San Diego, Museum of Man in San Diego, San Diego Museum of Art, Children's Museum in San Diego, Syracuse University Museum, and the Sam Tag and the Bathurst Museum in Australia. Miami New Times named his mural as the best Miami mural for 2016. In 2017, he was awarded the role of lead artist in an NEA grant with Sonoma Valley Museum of Art to mentor a group of underserved high school art students through the professional level of mural project. And last but not least, we have Simon Heideck. Growing up in British Columbia, Canada, Simon developed a strong affinity to nature with artistic foundations in visual art and music. In 2004, he gravitated towards painting as a full-time endeavor, bringing his musical background into the visual realm. Simon has explored many visual mediums, often with a strong influence in spiritual themes connected to nature. In 2007, he graduated from Vancouver Film School, Digital Design, where he learned motion graphics, among other computer skills. This led to him animating many of his paintings and subsequently has now brought this to many live DJ performances with various global music acts, including his own. He continues also to produce music and has released four full-length solo albums since 2002. Within art galleries, festivals, conventions, and online platforms, his work is exhibited globally. He can, currently works out of his studio in Roberts Creek, BC. While continuing to explore an ever-expanding palette of creative endeavors, artist statement. I'm curious about the about our psychic connection to nature and the interconnected universal source of all life. In my devotion to the creative process, I strive to find ways of producing art that inspires harmony between the earth and its shared inhabitants. I feel that our collective need and appreciation for nature unites us all. Each creation reflects an aspect of my life journey, thinning the veil between physical and the metaphysical realities. So that's enough of me reading, and I am super excited to welcome all of these artists on screen. So help me welcome Jake Coburn. We have Chor Boogie. We up, have Hello. Amanda Sage, and we have Chris Dyer and Simon Heideck. So we should all nail me on screen. Ta-da. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, make sure that everyone is um, unmuted as well. And we have Amanda. There we go. So welcome, everyone. Hi. Yay! Hello. Nice Yo, to be here. What's up? Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. 
<laughs> what an honor, Shannon. All right, thank you. Thank you for having us. It's so great to have everyone here. And this is the first time that we've had this many people on screen. So for those of you in the audience, um, I am doing the tech support. So if anything goes wrong, please blame me. I sincerely apologize. This is my first time. But I know the universe is going to uh, take care of it because we have such an amazing panel here today. So what's going to happen is I have a few questions for our panel. We're going to go around and hear what they have to say. And then we're going to go to the audience for questions. And uh, feel free to ask a question at the bottom there. You guys know the drill. So let's start with our uh, first question. But actually, before we go into the questions, um, welcome, guys. Is there anything that you guys want to say before we get started? Put you on it's the spot. so nice let's to go. be with let's this go. crew. Let's, let's, yeah. yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. I everyone. love every single. Yeah. Grateful. Mm. Everybody coming through. Checking us <laughs> yeah. out, hearing what a bunch of the bunch of artists got to say. Yeah. Thanks. And I know a lot of you guys know each other from from you know working together all over the world. So it's kind of uh, kind of neat to have you all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a nice oh, little yeah. reunion. <laughs> little motley crew yeah thanks to everyone for showing up to check it out and hear whatever we have to say and you know so stoked on maps canada putting us through definitely awesome well let's dive right into the questions so we have a few questions here that we're going to ask the panel and the first question we have is we are in a time where psychedelic medicines are becoming more mainstream and are a part of consciousness evolution. How would you say that these ancient medicines have informed your work as an artist, if at all? So if we wanna start, um, whoever's ready can just go ahead and then we'll move on to the next. Um, could you repeat that question? You kind of broke up a little bit. Absolutely, so here's the question. We are in a time where psychedelic medicines are becoming more mainstream and are a part of consciousness evolution. How would you say that these ancient medicines have informed your work as an artist, if at all? Mm. Mm -hmm. um, anybody want to chime in on that? Sure, I would well, say for me, it, I, I feel like it's very informed by them. It really, to me, is... Uh, it, it's created a lot more dimensionality and uh, realization of a more connected reality. So it has, they have a way of bringing a lot of things together. It opens channels of communication that weren't really there before. Um, so for me, it was a really big pivot um, into being able to express a whole other way of uh, seeing the world and being in the world and how to connect um, with each other and spirit, especially like the bringing the spiritual dimensions into the physical and how to express that. Yeah, I was going to say that I was making art before I took psychedelics and a lot of the work that I was creating even before my first psychedelic experiences already had a kind of psychedelic style to them. Uh, but my art would be dramatically different if I had never taken psychedelics, psychedelics, you know, and I had steep my brain and many tryptamines and phenylethamines that I've known and loved over many years just was like nuclear creativity and open doors within my mind and creativity that I didn't even know existed. And one of the primary roles that psychedelics have played in my life in relationship to my creativity is that they help to heal me of a lot of kind of a mental and psychological struggle, which was reflected in the work that I was creating. So as I became uh, more open and more sort of whole within myself, my work shifted dramatically from um, a lot of work that I made in my early years expressed a, a kind of existential despair or disease. And as psychedelics healed me and allowed for my consciousness to ascend, the work that I created was informed by that content. So it's also bestowed me with a kind of responsibility to create artwork that can be nourishing and healing to the viewer. Mm -hmm. 
can I talk? Um, I find like when you want to be an artist is because you're like this like sensitive being that has some kind of like feelings to be expressed uh, like outwardly, maybe like through visions or music or writing. Like basically you got this energy that you need to express. So we start expressing what we know as kids. But then when you're a kid or a teenager, you start going to like school and adults are telling you what the world's about and they start putting all these boxes on you. And then they start shaping who you are uh, according to who they think you should be and to fit into this society that the culture has built for you to be part of. And as you get the chance to take uh, natural medicines, they kind of like shift the perspective and makes you see reality from a different point of view. And then you realize yourself as something even bigger than this human in a part of society and, and so on. Like, basically helps you see outside of the box. And then when you're painting or expressing from that place of liberation, even if the, it was just a glimpse of who you really are, then we can start bringing uh, you know, images and blueprints and music and vibrations and, and messages from the other side of reality that helps us get closer, at least to the path back to the source that made us become whatever we are in this physical realm. So for me, it's a it's a work in progress. Uh, there's a lot of work to do to truly liberate myself and just be the love that created me and is me. And uh, the closer I get, the more I can come out in my art. And uh, I think it's uh, similar to a lot of us creators. Amanda, you want to go, Amanda? Sure, I'll add on to that. <laughs> I mean, I feel that like, I feel very connected with what you guys have already said, you know, this, uh, you know, and, and, you know, the, what it opened up for me is I think it gave me an extra permission in certain ways to explore and, uh, and trust something within this mystery that we're a part of that there's a, a dance happening and i you know with the paintbrush in your hand or whatever it is your tool of your sculpting tool your hands become this medium of communication and so for me it's, a, it's like some beautiful dance that is something that is me but it is this experience of of the mystery and you know and this gift this desire to give a gift of of honoring and and love to share with others so that we can remember you know that remember something about this 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 mystery that we often seem to forget too so thanks yeah um yeah um i've been a artist since i was like five years old and i felt like i've always had a spiritual connection creating even before i started getting into plant medicines but let me say this as i'll say once i started uh you know experimenting with like lsd and mushrooms um on a party level not having the education that i have about them now i feel that it definitely had an effect on my artwork <laughs> way back when and um you know over the years going down the path that i went down um once I experienced or got involved with plant medicines, I definitely have to say it, it's it's definitely transitioned my work into a whole different perspective when it comes to, you know, more more love involved in my work. Like more like uh, it's it has more of a, a of of a loving loving expression versus you know revealing that dark side of <laughs> who I really am. You know. And it, it basically, it basically formulates that balance, you know, and I'm not going to front and just say that, you know, the dark side isn't there because it still comes out of my artwork. Um, but now there's some balance, especially when, uh, when the, when the love comes through and you can totally see it within the artwork. Definitely. And there's that love for you, Chris. Definitely. Oh, yeah. oh, Bye, see. Love, love. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, it's 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 gonna be love when it comes to whatever I express within my artwork, and that's usually the foundation of plant medicines. So we can keep it moving from here. <laughs> Thanks so much, Chor. Yeah. You um, mind if I say just one more thing about the subject? Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Which, which is which is just that a lot of the psychedelic experiences that I've had, especially on high doses of psychedelics, have been so bewildering and so amazing and so bizarre that it has inspired me deeply to want to uh, communicate that to others because it's it's absolutely one of the most fascinating experiences that you can ever have and a very small percentage of the population of the world has those experiences and an even smaller population of the world has the toolkit to be able to actually transcribe those experiences in a way that other people could then receive them. So I feel like given my skill set and my explorations as a psychonaut, I have a kind of rare responsibility to be able to take these weird experiences that I've had, these amazing transcendental revelatory, you know, possibly religious kind of experiences and be able to create art so that other people can can see that and experience it and to try to map that out, which is I think one of the rules that visionary psychedelic art is playing is trying to kind of document that um, as firsthand accounts of the psychedelic experience. And it's uh, it, it contributes to the ongoing conversation that is you know thousands of years old actually about what that experience is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, very well said, Jake. Does anyone else um want to add to that and it kind of ties into our our next question as well as you know where does your inspiration come from and has there been any kind of specific project that has had huge impact on you in your in your career anyone want to take a shot at starting that one anybody want to go <laughs> have a go uh I'll start again, I guess. Yeah. Um, and would you stop from the top to the top right, to the right. bottom? Work around. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, my my primary inspiration, a lot of it is coming from nature. It's said over and over again, um, but that is, I'm I'm trying to combine nature and the metaphysical experience because I feel like it's so important to how we are existing in this world and understanding our connection to everything and trying to find harmony with everything is really psychedelics provide a deeper sense of listening to ourself to our spirit and to the world and you know we're, we're drifting away from a disconnection to nature so i feel like like for me early on a lot of my artwork was more cosmic but it uh it wasn't really resonating with people unless they had done psychedelics um or understood that part more so i really wanted to bring it into uh merge it with something that a broader audience could understand and for me that was nature because everyone can connect with nature so um yeah so that's that's a big part of it and and music i'm often trying to combine like a musical aspect because i'm a musician also so it's like the how do we see music as met metaphysical reality kind of represented in light and sound waves when you break it down. So, so those are, those are really big aspects and I'll, I'll just go on to the other part of the question, which for, which was if, if there was a specific project um, that has impacted my career. And for the past few years, I've been experimenting with combining my, um, my art and music into this into an audio visual experience because i animate my paintings and and make music and i use other people's music sometimes also and i bring it into a live experience where it's all merged into this synthesis of all these things um so yeah it's it's a it's an awesome journey and and it just something else that comes to mind i want to don't want to like hog the stage here but i just feel like you know we're, we're connecting about like this these deeper levels and chores talking about heart and there is this sense of like how like what what goes into the artwork and like what's infused into it jake was talking a lot about that too and there's these experiences but often there's sort of like a sense of prayer 
And I know that all the artists here have that, like these deep life experiences of like what what's going on and how to make that conversation into an image. And for me, even just this year, like my my sister's going through, my twin sister is going through a deep healing process. And I've painted a picture of her as a devotion to her healing, but it's also become like about the world's transformation and healing. It's just coinciding that she's going through this while the world is going through this massive transformation. And so I've done a couple versions of it and there's always a sense of every aspect of it relating to this bigger picture and this story and, you know, working on the artwork, getting, getting all into the emotional layers of it and how we're just the interconnectedness of everything. It uh, becomes so meaningful and it's, it's difficult to try and portray that in an image, but I know all of us are really trying to express so many layers to our artwork frequently. So, yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you, Simon. I'll go next, we'll go the typewriter style. <laughs> um, first of all, I hope your sister does well, Simon. Uh, I hope it heals and everything goes good. I remember, uh, Amanda and me did a collaboration painting 2012 in Australia to uh, call in some healing for my wife at the time. So I understand what it is to do a piece for a beloved to call in physical healing in the process. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tricky one. You know, we live in the physical world and there's parameters, so there's sicknesses. And then we try to like, you know, we want everything to be like amazing and happy, but there's a situation. So we try our best to navigate it through uh, with our spiritual tools. As for the answer for the question, uh, what's the inspiration for my art? There's a lot of things that I love. So like my art is always like me uh, talking about how I feel about a, a, a bunch of different things but all with the filter of these things that I love. You know, I'm a city kid, I'm half Peruvian, half Canadian. I love to skateboard, I like to be in the streets. I love music and vinyl and action figures and cartoons and culture and traveling and architecture and tattoos and everything. There's just so much beauty in this world and nature and just, there's just so much awesome things in this planet and they touch me and then, you know, they, they become all puzzle pieces and I want to create things that are kind of like collages of many cultures as to transform it into one and create the oneness with it as I try to express how I feel any day. Oh, I feel happy today. I feel sad, I'm depressed, heartbroken, you know, like a, a real honest human experiences, which is what I feel I have to um, put out there in my personal expression. Um, but my intention is really also to, um, you know, help to heal the world in any way I can because the world's fucked up and it's crazy and you just want to do like your grain of sand to try to like shift the balance and create a crescendo as to, uh, just create a balance, not even turn the world positive because as Chor said, the, we got to honor the negative too. The darkness has a role. It shows us our three dimensionality. It has tons of lessons, like God bless the darkness. But when it's unbalanced and it's taking over, it's almost like we got to shine our light brighter and go out there and, and do more medicine and make the effort to go out there in the world and like put it on the table for, for people to help themselves in this buffet of love that us uh, artists are providing to our community. So as for projects, um, I love different projects that I do. There's not like one project that I like more than others. I, I love making books. I've been like making books since I was like, you know, seven years old and I still like creating my books and I'm still, I'm working at my next coffee table book that should be out in like a couple of years probably because I still got lots to do. These days I'm doing a podcast and I know there's like a million podcasts and I was resisting doing a podcast myself, but then just it kept on hitting my head that I had to share my my artist friends but not the famous ones that like like you guys are all like famous in your own realms but my homies in montreal who have less of a spotlight so these days i've been going to the studios of all these like local montreal artists that are as special as anybody else and i'm just kind of like interviewing them for an hour and then my editor is working on them right now and then soon i'll share it on my youtube or whatever and whoever gets that gets that and once again I'm just trying to provide more medicine. It may be mine or others or whatever. 
we need more uh, weapons of light in this uh, war between darkness and light. And, and to create any tubes or channels that bring that energy to a world that needs healing urgently uh, at the same time as I try to heal myself. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm up to. Right on, Chris. Yeah, I think that my art, it's transitioned a lot in its intention. I think that, like Chris was saying, a lot of when I first began making art, it was about just expressing uh, these kind of like emotional feelings and all the experiences I was having. And uh, it was really about love. Like I wanted to be vulnerable. I wanted to express the deeper stirrings of my heart in such a way that would be seen and received and accepted by other people. And that was really powerful. And I think that level of communication that, that an artist can facilitate is very profound to be able to really put your soul out there for other people to be able to witness and to experience. But as I've grown as an artist, and this is certainly informed by experiences I've had in uh, ceremony uh, and in psychedelics and in rituals and things like that, I want to create art that is in service of a higher spirit and can help evolve the consciousness of the planet. And I want to be a conduit for whatever medicine the world needs. And this is also inspired by my own experiences of art and artists. I mean, when I was younger, I discovered Alex Gray's art when I was maybe 13 or 12 years old. And at the time it was, I wasn't in a good place in my life, but his artwork was so astonishing and so beautiful that it uplifted my heart and spirit. It gave me so much hope. And I've had these experiences, not just with Alex Gray's art, but with so many artists throughout my life. And that's inspired me. And as I grow as an artist, I understand that that's part of my role and responsibility then to provide some kind of medicine, to provide some kind of hope or nourishment for the audience that comes into contact with the work that I create, you know, because like Chris said, there's so much darkness on the planet right now. And we have to kind of hold that balance. It's a, it's a powerful role, almost like a shaman or something like that, that we have as artists now. Um, and in terms of a particular project, you know, this was a hard question for me to answer when I was thinking about it, because all of my artwork that I've created has all been powerful in different ways. But I really love teaching, you know, having a direct like impact on somebody's life. I just finished teaching a 12 week course with 25 students and they had profound life changing experiences. And it's so inspiring to be able to facilitate that for people and to be a part of people's growth and development to feel like you're making a direct positive impact on the lives of others. So teaching has been really powerful for me. And I also have a podcast and that's also been an incredible experience to be able to have the privilege to be able to speak to so many brilliant minds and to be able to, uh, you know, be part of the, the sharing of that, the sharing of these powerful beings and to maybe reach and impact others in a positive way. Oh. oh yeah, right on Jake. And um, I, I feel incredibly inspired these days and most of my life uh, by community and the idea of bringing people together and uh, doing that through art, you know, and I've had this tool of being able to express ourselves through art, you know, be it dance or music or painting or cooking or whatever it is, some creative form, you know, like embedding that. I feel like that's a key to, to our remembering in a way, you know? And so I have really enjoyed as a, a project of recent is really seeing this, this thing take off that we've, we're calling the vision train and this uh, as an experimental platform that's happening on Zoom actually. It opened on March 24th and has been a nonstop virtual art space since then. And uh, Chor, I wanna do, do, do a jam with you on there sometime soon and Simon and Chris, you've been on there a bunch and Jake, you've been on there a bunch and you know, we should, I wanna invite everybody out there to come get on board with this. Um, it's something, we don't really know where we're going yet but we're interested in exploring you know, I'm really interested in exploring. I'm interested in seeing what it looks like when, when we try. And that means every single one of us picks up a brush or a pencil and we draw out our vision. We write it out. We encourage each other to 
express it in some way so that so that others may hear you know and then our choir can come together as we listen to each other because it's not just about talking it's about listening too right so much so so it's not just about expressing it's about witnessing each other's work and telling each other how awesome we think it is and being inspired by it so i'm inspired by others i'm gonna that right now i'm so inspired by others and that fueling my fire to keep um keep riding the train <laughs> see where we're gonna go <laughs> Um, yeah. boss, um, your honor, could you please repeat the question in its entirety, please? Could you please repeat the question? Absolutely. What if, mm -hmm. so here it is question as a visit, as a visionary artist, where does your inspiration come from? And has there been a specific project in your career that has had the most impact on you personally? Um, as a visionary artist, where does my inspiration come from? Where does it come from? I'd have to say it comes from within out, but I also have to say it comes from you, comes from everyone, comes from all of us. Um, I don't, I don't just subject my, my inspiration just to myself. I, I, I subject it to everything outside of me as well. And the reason being is because, you know, we're all, everybody, everybody's an artist, everybody's inspirational. And they can, they can put something, say something, do something out there that, that can motivate and inspire the next person. And to me, that's motherfucking inspiring. Like, that's really inspiring. And um, to be a part of that, to help inspire others to, to, you know, whatever it is, even if you're, even if you're inspiring them to, to, to help heal themselves, you know, you can, you, uh, you, you can do that through artwork. You can do that through plant medicines. Um, but inspiring them to take themselves or whatever they create or whatever they, they do to the next level is, is inspiring within itself. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to just keep it, keep it or keep the inspiration within me, like and hoard it and, you know, be greedy with it. No, it's, it's all of us. All of us are inspiring each other. And as far as a project is going, I don't brag. I'm not a bragger. So, um, I don't discriminate when it comes to any of my projects. I love all of them. I'm right along with all y'all guys. It's the same. Like I, I do not discriminate with my projects. I love them all, down to the littlest shitty one. You know, I, I love it because, you know, I help. I created it. I help create it, and hopefully, that project will inspire somebody. So, no, I, I love all my projects even my future ones. So that's, that's where I'm at when it comes to projects and inspiration. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chor. And um, I see that Michael put the link for the vision train in the chat there. We're actually also going to be sending out an email within the next couple of days that will have links to all of the amazing courses these artists are running and some podcasts and any kind of, um, social media links so you guys can make sure and check them out and follow them and, and see what they're doing as well. So that'll be out within the next couple of days here too. So we have another question. Um, so you guys have talked about some of the key themes that you've communicated in your work. Would you say that these themes have changed over time? And in the same question, I'm gonna throw something else at you. In regards to healing, has this helped with your personal healing and has it helped with collective healing? So question again, key themes that you're communicating in your work and have they changed over time? And if they have, you know, maybe share with us why. And then has your art helped with your personal healing and collective healing? So whoever wants to go at that one first. 
Simon the above. Is Simon again or? Yeah, yeah. Simon from the go top. first. It's kind of funny. Maybe one of you guys take it. I can go first if you want. Yeah, you go first. Um, theme, yeah, the question already though. I'm gonna play a short movie here. Can you repeat <laughs> the question, please? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so what are the key themes that you've communicated in your work? Have they changed over time? And has your art helped with your personal healing and also perhaps collective healing? All right. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, well, I am a man who is 41 years old. So definitely the things that I paint today is uh, different from the things that uh, 17 year old street gang member Chris was painting. He was painting a lot about death and destruction and being tough. And as remember I was saying how like society gives us all these boxes. Well, I put a shitload of boxes over me uh, throughout my whole life to protect the sensitive artsy Chris that was growing up in Lima, Peru at the time. And if you didn't want any idea, you know how like, you know, not tough he was. So I was trying to be like triple tough and putting all these armors around me and, and my art was part of that art, that armor, you know, like, um, you know, the, the stuff I was doing for my street gang and all the, you know, monsters. And, and, and once again, the, the, the things I was expressing through me was through a guy who was like getting drunk all the time and just doing a bunch of terrible things that uh, less and less I do today. So the themes definitely change as an expression of that. And, uh, once again, the, the psychedelics and the medicines are just cleaning out all these uh, negative aspects or maybe allowing them to surface once in a while enough to give me the reflection for me to naturally go to the other side of the balance. Um, if I had to like uh, generalize what my art's about, I guess like it's always like the journey of going back home to love, to God, to oneness. And uh, that's a very complicated uh, equation um, that I'm still figuring out. And there's just so many aspects to it. But it, it, it really, it's, you know, it's all about love of different things. And uh, there was, it was a two-parter. What's the second part of the question? Sorry, I'm forgetful these days. The uh, second part was, how has it helped with your personal healing and also collective healing? Yeah. For me, my art, like, I don't want to come out and be all like, my art is for everybody to be healed in their problems. That would be a little bit cocky and arrogant of me. If that happens, kick ass and sweet because I'm a reflection and a mirror to other people's issues that they might see in my art. But when I create is because I got my issues. I got my pain, my traumas, my, my pains that I need to heal and give love towards and I'm building up a new Chris, a Chris that's uh, confident and happy and satisfied with, with little and uh, naturally loving, non-competitive, uh, sees himself and everybody else. That's what I'm building this art piece to be. So the art that has to come out of that has to be reflections of that. And also the negative aspects too, because sometimes I got to put the, the negativity right in the mirror and be like, aha, I see you. Aha, you can't get away negative side of me. Let's dance. I don't hate you. Come on. I love you too, negativity. I'll give you some love. Give you some peace. <laughs> you can purge too. Now I can purge. Let's let it go. Ah, now there's some space for the love to go, come back in. And ah, now I can paint again about, about love. But it's the dance, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, art definitely helps me get my shit out, and uh, to help myself understand myself in order to know what I need to repair and to give myself intentions to do that uh, healing, and uh, one step at a time. <laughs> give awesome. Thanks, Chris. Right on. Uh, I want to hit to... this question. So, like awesome. in terms, I'll talk in terms of themes. You know, if you look back, like I recently discovered some art that I made like in high school when I was like 15 years old. And if you look at the themes and the style of the work, it's pretty consistent, actually. It's it's a lot less refined in terms of my technical abilities and stuff. But it seems like what was coming through is 
pretty similar. At the time, I made a lot of darker art, you know, that kind of reflected the sort of depression that I was experiencing at the time, things like that. But a lot of the themes of the transcendent and a lot of themes of kind of like, uh, you know, numinous realms of consciousness seem to be expressed through my work then. But what I, th I think it just speaking in terms of how art in general and the, the artist's role in the healing of the collective, I think more than anything, psychedelics have really shown me the responsibility that artists have because you know, I've shown my art at festival galleries a lot and I've taken psychedelics at festivals and you go into the galleries on psychedelics at festivals and you realize that the art has varying degrees of impact on your consciousness. So some of the art is like very soothing. The minute you see it, it's like a hug envelops you and it's warm. And some of the art actually, if you're on psychedelics is actually, is, is rather disturbing to look at. So realizing that for the kind of art that I make as a psychedelic artist who exhibits work in psychedelic art galleries, I realize that people are going to be in those open states of consciousness when they view my work. So I wanted to try to create art that you could show in a festival gallery. And if somebody was going through an intense experience, it could be like soothing or comforting for them, you know? And I actually had an experience. I took LSD in the HR Giger Museum and that was an intense experience where it was like, you know, his art is amazing, but, it, and it's gorgeous. He's one of my favorite artists, but uh, you know, it's also like there's aberrations or rifts that can occur in one's psyche when they let in that, that kind of, that energy, you know, in, into their consciousness. And, and uh, I used to really idolize people like Giger and having those experiences, I've transitioned. It's, it's made me be more responsible in terms of how, what kind of art I want to create and what kind of impact I want it to have. And I have a kind of funny story about that. So my girlfriend's Ukrainian and her mom is just like a normal Ukrainian woman who, you know, drinks alcohol, isn't engaged in spirituality or anything. She sent her my art and she had a conversation with her mom and her mom was like, wow, I feel like I can just understand the universe. She's like, maybe I should start meditating. You know, so there's like, there's this funny thing. And I've heard many stories like this, you know, not just about my art, but visionary art in general, that it has this, this impact. It's like you're, you're able to upload a particular message or frequency or energy into the minds of people who view it. That's like subliminal. It hits at like a deep subconscious level. And uh, it's a way of, you know, if you, if you try to, um, you know, proselytize about the psychedelic experience and you try to, you know, try to convince people to meditate or whatever, people are maybe going to be resistant to that. But it's much more palatable and accessible to present a stunning visual image and that people will get that information without even realizing that it's happening. It's just saturating their consciousness in this profound way. And uh, yeah, I, I believe that that's always been the role of art, even from the earliest cave paintings, that there's a magical quality to it, that images are transformative and the symbols that they carry have the potential to impact people. And artists are also the meaning makers. You know, we all surf out on this vast sea of chaos and that's terrifying. But artists are uh, endowed with the responsibility, the role to be able to take that chaos and to be able to discern meaning and metaphor from it that that can be like food to people you know that can can give people better stories that they can navigate life with so you know i i try to i try to hold these concepts in my mind um in regards to the intentions when i create my art awesome thanks jake so oh go ahead jake Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead, Char. Char. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. So when it comes to themes, you know, uh, I I come from the aerosol culture, which is definitely so related and tied. It's ridiculous, and um, I grew up in that, and that's it's it's not a pretty world but we make it pretty with our artwork and um but but it, it definitely plays it definitely plays a major role in 
the dark side, but the light side as well. But when it comes to that theme, like I've, I've expressed that theme for so long that um, uh, when it comes to the, I want to say the dark side or the darkness or, you know, just the negativity within, but, 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 it, but it also resorted into, into beauty at the end of the day, especially with the creation. And when the, the, the medicines, like I said earlier, you know, like the, like, you know, I took in, took in crazy amounts of LSD and all that stuff that had an influence on my artwork. I, I, I know it <laughs> and mushrooms and stuff, but, um, I, I didn't know the, I didn't know the context of, of what it, what it really meant or, or I always thought they were like a, a party substance. So going along with those themes of, of graduating to the next level of, of what, my, what my consciousness really can, I'll say, provide or can create, uh, I'd have to say once, once, I, once I decided to uh, get clean off of uh, substances, at a young age, I, I felt like I tapped into more of my spiritual self. And then once I tapped more into my spiritual self and knowing who I was, uh, the artwork just flowed. I didn't really think too much about it. I just let it be itself, be original. And, and it just poured out. It's just like, you know, my ancestors were just, okay, we're coming right through you. <laughs> and they they just poured all that energy onto the surface, onto the onto the walls that I was painting, onto the canvases that I was painting with spray paint. Um, and then later on in my life, as 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 I you know graduated to you know plant medicines and stuff, and really knowing and observing and and understanding, overstanding and understanding what these plants are really about, and the plant medicine that I work with is iboga really took me to to this broad earth perspective of what my artwork has really transitioned to and like i said earlier love love is love and it definitely led to that but you know there's a balance there's a balance to everything mm. you know it's just you know just which side which side you want to choose which side did I choose? And um, what was the second part of your question? It was about healing, personal healing. Okay, well, I think I might have gone into that, but yeah, into my mm -hmm. personal healing. Um, like I said earlier, when 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 I when I got when I got clean off substances, off off drugs. Um, that 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 was definitely a transition into my personal healing especially tapping deeper into my artwork and my artwork just just grabbed a hold of me and just said nope you can't go back to that that way of life we have to go down this path you have to go down this path and love and have a genuine spiritual love loving connection with your uh creative abilities and so I chose that path and now here I am, you know, up to this day. But I'll say this, this art world, this art life, yeah, when, when, when I got clean, I got clean for 13 years, this art world and this art life, traveling the world, making money, doing all types of crazy shit, definitely opened the door to circles that um, I, I either, I, I basically said, uh, you know, had a case of the fuck it's and was like, okay, I'm going to go back and p play again. And so once I went back into playing, you know, it took me back down those dark paths and, and, and that also had a theme within my artwork too, because you could totally see it within my artwork. You know, because my soul was basically, okay, you want, you're playing around, you're playing around with that dark stuff. It's going to show up. It's going to show in your artwork. 
and it did. Mm -hmm. So, but once I was introduced to iboga and to, to plant medicines, I was like, whoa, man, wow, like this shit, this shit is real. Like this is, I'm telling you, like plant medicines are not my world. I'm not, I'm not a hippie. I don't go there. I'm not, I'm not, that's not my, that's not my thing. But now it is because it, it, it's a reality. It's just a reality that, that, that helped transition not only just my artwork, but myself mm -hmm. to broader perspectives, a, 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 a broader um, understanding, overstanding and understanding of what my artwork and myself, who they really are on an original concept on an original basis. Yeah, that's, that's just, that's just how I feel when it comes to the themes of creativity, the themes of, of where these plant medicines or where these medicines are, where your artwork can take you. And that's yeah. just a little descriptive, descriptive history. Yeah. Of that. <laughs> Yeah, on that note, you know, we really are all each original yeah. creatures, unique unto ourselves. And the further we like explore the essence or whatever it is that comes out of us, you know, each line that is going to be different, you know. And I think that's been, I mean, that's a reoccurring theme for all of us on this adventure of life. You know, it's a one thing leads to the next, leads to the next, and hopefully towards some kind of deeper healing, you know? Uh, and, but it's a ride, right? And I, I, one theme that's really been very strong in my work for quite a long time, was, there was a specific period, and we go through these at different times where we're like, man, you know, I need some help. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's like a moment where you kind of get down on your knees and you're like, I need some guidance. And uh, you know, if you're if you're lucky, you take action and you do something, you go on a vision quest, you, you know, go on some heroic uh, you know, a hero's journey. Uh and I, I went on a on a journey, it was 2006, and I, I went, I took a box of paints and uh a roll of canvas, and I went to Bali, Indonesia by myself, and I got a place for a couple months. I know you're there now jake i haven't been back in so long but uh, i and i started i just went to paint by myself oh yeah <laughs> to explore that i didn't have the external pressures of uh expectations and all the voices you know and, and there was this painting that I started just out of the kind of like the, you know, just the mess of the pigments. And I found myself sleeping in this bottom. And then out of the stormy sky came a serpent, a rainbow serpent with an egg in its mouth. And this egg, I had this flash that I was going to be painting eggs for the rest of my life. <laughs> As like spaceship portals, like gateways, doorways to explore. You know, and so that's a that's a story that came to mind with that. And I feel like uh, that is a, a, a path of healing. And a lot of these energy lines that I paint as well are kind of like this balancing of the spheres and of like space. And it's kind of like you guys ever see the movie, The Green Beautiful, yeah. The Green Beautiful. It's a great movie. If you haven't seen it, it's a French film, The Green Beautiful. You can and they do this. They stand in water and it's like a a distant future civilization they stand in water and they go like this <laughs> when they want to call each other <laughs> and they could just psychically can like communicate you know and so i feel like i do that with painting or that's part of the aim sometimes it's like it's like tuning my channel <laughs> yeah what about you simon Absolutely, yeah Awesome. I mean, I, there's, there's obviously like recurring themes and I don't want to reiterate too much on what other people have said, but it's, it's awesome. And I feel like, well, like just to 
the the transition the transition of my themes go a lot into the like healing transformation process where it's similar to chris like when i was younger i was doing sort of more like destructive i guess you could call it i was really influenced by comic books and superheroes and like ninjas and there was like blood and weapons and things like that <laughs> and um you know listening to punk rock and you know more more aggressive and then for sure psychedelics had a such a huge i mean i was doing psychedelics back then but like there was just a there was a tr transitionary point in my early 20s that was like a big awakening and uh uh like jake actually like alex gray there was something about seeing his work and listening to tool that kind of thing and anyway um then getting into like i said like our already before like cosmic consciousness and then grounding it down onto the earth level with like the nature and so it has a lot to do with expressing that the communication of what we're going through in the human experience and so it's a communication to other people but it's also for ourselves. and so it's like anything we make has that intention and so it's like a reminder to us you know every time work because we're going to see our work over and over again but it's for other people and then they give us feedback and so we're it's this collective consciousness this collective transformation so it's it's not just healing it's often concepts that we're trying to understand on a deeper level and uh, i think a lot of what i hear from people too in this is that you know like uh is is sort of the the uh like chris was saying too like dancing with your darkness so for me with my music i make part of my music's like ambient just super chill meditative but then i have a branch of my music that's a bit more like heavier kind of rock music um and it it's how i ex i i use it as a more of a filter for the sort of like i still have a lot of anger and frustration and depression so my my uh visual art is often intentionally sort of more the love and light nature but my soul needs to have a channel to express the like sludginess that exists because <laughs> i feel like we're you know like even though i paint this sort of love and light nature there's this aspect of nature that's totally horrific like <laughs> It's like I follow this account on Instagram, nature is metal, and it's this awesome reminder of how grotesque things are. Like we have our animals and they're super, super cute, loving kitten, and then I'll go watch it, like maybe it'll murder a, a bird for no good reason. <laughs> and cute, we're like as humans coming to terms with the yin yang of this 3D realm where we're just in this strange balance of like w this darkness and light and we want to find this middle point yet in this physicality it all exists and then in the metaphysical we go to these spaces that we we see this center point that is sort of this like you could call it the god energy or source energy and then we come back to the physical and it's like ah like what is this and you know it's it's very challenging and so we're you know we're trying to find that and how we heal and transform and understand this deeper and how we're in it together so it's a it's a really amazing journey for sure thank you, thank so, you so much Simon. Simon. So, so we have about 20 minutes left can you guys hear an echo a little bit um let's see if i move my mic away mine's away um we're going to move into the questions now from crowdcast that we have from our viewers here and it looks like i lost shore so when we move into those i'm going to try to also there he is back on screen all right perfect um so we're going to move into these questions from our audience here and we're going to start with um the highest voted voted questions and then once we're done the questions, I have one more question uh, for you guys to answer as well. So let's start with one from Sarah. She says, some of you talked about how psychedelic experiences radically transformed your artwork. Can you talk a little bit more about that in detail? In what ways did these experiences tra transform your style evolution on a technical level and or on a creative level? And I think Quite a few have actually already touched on that, but if there's anything else you want to um, 
to say on that, feel free to do so. So a little bit more detail about how psychedelic experiences radically transformed your artwork. I definitely started painting lots of wavy lines after I had my first LSD experience. <laughs> I mean, it was so much more, but it was, it was a lot of like, uh, it was, it felt so natural. Like I was remembering something like it was definitely not something totally new. And then it just was just woven everywhere. And I was like, all right, this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. I remember my, my first like uh, solo LSD trip, I just sat with my sketchbook and drew all night. And it was as if my hand was being taken by something else and, and was being guided. Like I wasn't the one doing it and I was just watching it happen. And that experience changed my life. That was like one of, at the time, that was probably the most amazing experience I ever had in my entire life. It was very different than what you would typically consider an LSD trip to be. I didn't see any crazy colors or anything like that. But this experience of something outside of me creating art through me that was so unquestionably real was a life changing mm -hmm. experience. And I, I have experienced that on psychedelics, but I also have managed somehow sometimes to tap into that experience on the Natch, you know, and that's really where I feel like, you know, psychedelics have the potential to open you up to these higher states of consciousness, that if you're a willing conduit for the muse, the muse is stoked to joy, you know, joyride you as a willing conduit and to help create higher, you know, consciousness art through you. And I think that that's what visionary artists are, are doing in general. And then I've just had so many mind blowingly visual experiences with DMT, with ayahuasca, with LSD that were just so powerfully impactful visually in regards to you know complex uh you know interdimensional uh you know c contact with with seeming entities or uh you know very complex geometric patterns uh nuanced subtle immaculately detailed geometric forms and and beautiful color combinations and there's been so many times where not on a psychedelic but directly following a psychedelic journey i've i've been like i need to capture that like i have to integrate that experience somehow into my work because that was so beautiful that was so cool or even just like that was weird i don't know what that was but you know let's make something out of that that was a really unusual experience so you know I, it's it's almost like to me okay so like any creative person who's really deeply explored psychedelics when you start talking about it in this way it's almost like trite or silly because it's such an intense and and crazy and creative experience that it's almost uh it's almost like a, it's it's self-explanatory in a way for for you know creative beings who have explored these realms it's it's uh un it's unquestionable that they have an impact creatively and have had an impact creatively on the work of artists of, of many different types throughout history of, for those who have explored them deeply. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> and I, I, wanna, I wanna bank off that, cause that's awesome. One of my like sort of awakening experiences also was totally like had just like a blank piece of paper out and some Sharpies and a friend. He's like, hey, we're gonna listen to all these tool albums and just, and I was like, but we should, we should draw, we should have some art tools and uh, yeah, like totally just having my arm being taken away and like drawing sound. It was this experience of drawing sound and that was so transformational and how how things progressed for me from there and just like so mind blowing to be like, what is even happening? I'm seeing sound in, and it was just, it was like scribbles, but when you're in an altered state, it's like realms upon realms of Escher worlds going into Escher worlds and and so there's that multi-dimensionality that, uh, that comes through where actually one of your questions, Shannon, that you wrote down was one of the difficulties of what are the difficulties of being a visionary artist. And I think that's part of it sometimes is, you know, again, like Jake said, is like you have these experiences and it's like, how, how do you express this? Like there's so many layers, there's these beings, there's feelings. And so uh, that, that really goes a lot into it. And it's like, is it a, is it is it wavy is it geometrical is it 
all these interconnected things. Where do the lines begin and end? And that's a, that's a big part of it. So yeah, just banking mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a very good visionary because it's not like I get visions and then do a, do a painting based on the vision. It's more like I'm a feeler. Um, when I started doing psychedelics, also like party mode, not very doing mushrooms with homies and drinking beers along and stuff. Um, and I wasn't seeing nothing. I was just feeling the power. And you learn through the power, you learn through the energy, and that also teaches you something that then you express visually. But it's not like I was seeing like other dimensions and other creatures and then painting them. Um, I only did two, uh, DMT in 2004, and that shit was so crazy and quick that I came down and I was like, uh, I don't know if I can paint that. <laughs> Uh, and forget about Bufo. Bufo, I don't even remember what happened. I think there's a, it's a very long story about whiteness and nothingness, but uh, uh, not much I could paint. Even the, the week after when I was having nightly encounters with those, six, uh, those entities from other places, I couldn't see them, but I could feel them, and they were certainly doing things to me. Um, nice things. Uh, but I, you know, I, I have a hard time painting it. So I got to like invent my own language to try to, um, uh, transfer it into a visual way. But then I've been doing ayahuasca for the last few years. And there I certainly see a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, and it's crazy and it's moving. And sometimes where I'm there, my mind's all like, Oh, dude, this is so cool. Take some mental photographs and then you can do some cool things. And, and then the the God side of me is like, you're doing homework in here, dude? Like, chill the fuck out. Just learn, just be, release, let go, disappear, become. Don't do homework. Don't take notes. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm in you all the time. It will come out subconsciously and it will be there you know, relax, you know, and just enjoy the ride and learn what you have to learn. Don't make it into like your next painting because that's like human mind, like, oh, I'm going to do this thing kind of, uh, kind of thinking. But yeah, sometimes it does, uh, come subconsciously and some things are remembered, but crudely, you know, like, uh, whatever I paint, even paintings that take me months will always be a cartoon compared to, uh, I don't know what it is, man. I, I guess it, it's all God and ayahuasca allows God to put on some kind of visual skin for me to see it dance and understand it. But the skin is also made from parts of my own mind and things I've seen in my mind. So sometimes ayahuasca is going to be like, this is going to be all about video games. Okay. Let's grab a little bit of Mario Bros, a little bit of Pac-Man, a little bit of Mega Man, and voila, Mandala's non-stop dance mode for hours. And it's like, what the fuck? How can I paint this? It's like, you know, but once again, it's telling me like, don't try to paint it. Don't try to capture me. You know, I'm not to be captured. You ineffable. Just release, let go, be it. And once you're it, then what you express, even if it's a Bob Ross painting, that is still an ayahuasca vision of God. Because everything is God and everything is trippy and everything is nothingness expressing in physicality. So, you know, nothing is more trippy than anything else. And, uh, yeah, so it's uh, – I, 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 I don't know if I answered the question there, but that's my experience. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Sure. Are you still there? Right, there you go. Yes, I'm here. Um, no, you will never catch me trying to create or paint or do anything while I am with medicine because I am trying to enjoy my journey. And I'm going in there to, to get answers, to get to, to, to fix things, to find things, to heal things. Um, usually everything happens after the medicine. It's almost like a, like an integrative process. So especially like with my, a lot of my Iboga paintings, 
um, inspired paintings. Those are actual related visions that I more or less interpreted from and from a vision, from visions that I've had. They 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 tell stories. They tell the truth. They they're they are actual visions that I'm that I'm portraying onto onto that surface. Um. But as far as it like enhancing like. Uh, I think a part of the question was like technical levels and, 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 um, you know, creative levels. Uh, I, 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 I'll give it a little bit of credit. I'll give plant medicines a little bit of credit of, um, you know, changing the perspective of, of how I've done things when it comes to creating and painting. Um, as far as technical skill, uh, that's, I've always been spiritually connected to that, especially when it comes to this, when it comes to a spray can, because that was one of my goals. Picking up that can was enhancing the technical abilities with that medium and taking it beyond levels that the culture hasn't seen. So, but I'll, I'll still give the plants credit for you know softening it up a little bit <laughs> and uh you know throwing a little bit of that love in there yeah definitely so i hope that answers your question thanks so sarah, much sarah rosenblum <laughs> <laughs> so we have a little bit of time left and we have a ton of questions here um we do. We're going to answer one uh, here from Dr. Patel and then uh, see if we can squeeze another one in yet. So uh, Dr. Patel asks, do you feel, believe the label psychedelic art to be limiting or reductionist? Oh, I love that question. But somebody else can answer it if you want. Go for it. Oh, okay. Go for it, Troy. Um, I think you should just ride with it. Do you feel or believe the label psychedelic art to be limiting or reductionist. I do. I do. I believe any label when it comes to being an artist is limiting and reductionist because they're just labels, you know, they, uh, like, honestly, I don't feel like I'm a psychedelic artist, um, a visionary artist. I, I just feel like I'm an artist. I, I create. I, I love what I do. You know, I create my own terminology, my own name for it, which is which is modern hieroglyphics. Um, you know, I don't I don't allow these 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 terminologies to dictate who I am and how I create. And bunch and put me in this little basket with everybody else. Put me in this basket with, with, um, with, uh, you know, with a bunch of people that, or no, no, let me re let me retract that statement. With a bunch of artists that you know um, are artists. You know what I mean? They 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 technically do their own thing. Like they have their own style. They have their 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 own originality. Um, so I believe, or I know that they wants to describe who they are and what they want to call their artwork, you know? So I do feel it's, it's limiting. It does put you, it does put you in a category and I feel that we can choose our own categories or we can, we can create our own category. Because we're artists, that's what we do. We're artists. <laughs> we're creators. <laughs> it's it's only makes sense. Like it's just obvious. That's just me, though. That's, I think it's just, a really that's my perspective. Amanda, I I agree something? with you, Chor, in many ways. Yeah, I, I mean, I believe I I feel very much like you do. I think that it's a good conversation starter, though. That's why I've 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 adopted it, you know, in the term visionary art. I'll be like, yeah, I'd be a visionary artist, and I think you could be too. 
you know it's like let's talk about it let's talk about what does that mean what does it mean to express you know like and psychedelic art it's like oh that's a big that's a big subject too it's huge and how each of us is going to do it like there's no style that defines either of these you know so i i i consider it a good a, a conversation starter and it's so much more of course i really i i, I feel a lot about like spiritual art like love tribe art <laughs> you know yeah i love that one <laughs> definitely awesome anyone else want to share on that one anyone else wants to answer all right I'll, I'll i'll go um yeah i'm also not super into terms i feel like when you're like a visionary artist or psychedelic artist or being a skate or street or etc cetera, etc cetera, it's almost like you're put in a box and you're not allowed to be past that title that could never really describe your you know ineffable energy being transferred into a painting uh, I think these uh, platforms are great uh, at the same time, too, because it helps us find our audience. You know, if you say you're visionary art, people know what that means. And they're like, well, I like that flavor. I like that intention. I like that style. So then they'll find you. And same with uh, street art or skate or whatever. It kind of like informs the viewer uh, where you're coming from. I myself, I'm always trying to create bridges between the different art movements as to create a oneness of everything. And as I said before, like there's no painting that's any less trippy or psychedelic than the next one. Like a Bob Ross landscape painting could be psychedelic if it comes from that soul God energy being transferred through a human. It might not have all the crazy colors that stereotypically fall into the uh, psychedelic uh, title, but you know, once well, again, as, as Amanda said, like the definition of what is a psychedelic uh, art or psychedelic being, like what, you got to do psychedelics every day in order to be a psychedelic person? Like, can I do my couple ceremonies a year and I, can I still f fit into a psychedelic being? Or because I spend my whole entire year sober and trying to center it in meditation, will that still make me a, a, a psychedelic person? And I spend years and years and years in sovereignty doing zero psychedelics. And I did some of like very psychedelic works and people would come to me like, whoa, what were you on when you did that painting? And I'd be like, no man, that's just coming from my heart, from my imagination. Like we all can do it with or without psychedelics. The psychedelics kind of like facilitates it or like makes it more clear, but it's in us already. We are the psychedelic. The, the, the psychedelic is just like a door to that God self that you're already you're 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 already it uh, mm -hmm. and uh we've thrown so many boxes and armors once again on ourselves that we 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 forget that and we're just trying to remember that that that, that fire in us and if we can present that fire for our art whatever label you you want to call it uh we've done our, our our job but um yeah not against the title neither you know uh, I, I love these communities because it's uh like-minded people who are trying to break out of these boxes and bring more love into the world mm -hmm. absolutely thank you chris yeah i agree with chris where you know it's useful because it helps pin down an audience the kind of people that like visionary and psychedelic art seem to resonate with the work that i create and it's like a useful uh, way an access point to interface with an audience that if I didn't have that sort of term to define it, maybe it'd be harder to find an audience. But I also feel sometimes kind of like uh, like a fraudulent psychedelic artist or something because you know nowadays I, I take maybe like one high dose of, of psychedelic per year or something like that, and I, I microdose kind of infrequently, and that's about it. And otherwise, you know, I have my other ways of accessing higher dimensions of consciousness that are done with in sobriety. But there's been times where I'm creating psychedelic art, calling myself a psychedelic artist. I'm not really using psychedelics. And I'm like, am I a real psychedelic artist? I don't know. I'm not really, you know. So it's kind of a funny term in that way. It's connotations about what that means. I mean, there have been very psychedelic artists that haven't ever taken psychedelics at all. You know, to me, psychedelic art is a, it's a, there's a flavor. You know, it has a particular tonality, a particular atmosphere. You know it when you see it. 
it doesn't necessarily need to be coupled with the actual ingestion of psychedelic chemicals, in my opinion, at least. Thanks, Jake. Anyone else? Um, yeah, I, I agree with what everyone else has already said. Labels are always tricky. Um, you know, we want to label things. A lot of things are just blurring the lines these days. Uh, one, one thing with my art and like, in the sense that this is the psychedelic renaissance and we're with Maps Canada and we're talking about actual psychedelics, I do, I do actually appreciate uh, a certain aspect of, for me, I enjoy the process of actually translating some of my experiences. Well, typically none of the paintings are outright a specific vision because like we've said, it's hard to translate those exact things there's fragments of it. And, and, you know, when I have people that come to me, they see my art and they tell me like, wow, that's, that's exactly like an experience I had on psychedelics. Uh, that, that is awesome to me because there is an aspect of what I'm doing. That is, it's just a different language. It's like, you can read a book, you can watch a movie or you can look at art or whatever, you know, so it's a different way of communicating. And it is pretty awesome to me when, people say like, that's an experience I had. Um, so, you know, that is, that is quite profound because we understand things on so many different, different levels. Um, so, you know, psychedelics are called psychedelics. So psychedelic art that translates those experience can be called psychedelic art, but of course it can encompass so much more and other things as well, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we, we lost Shannon. Did you? Um, oh, no, she's there. Did you there? You lost it. <laughs> oh, she's there. Yeah. Take the wheel, Chris. <laughs> uh, it seemed, uh, and her little square says, the stream was unable to connect due to the network error. And sure, you have still a connection. Try again. But uh -oh. looking at the refresh. Her, Am I back? I don't know where she's at. But in her little page. Question, I can hear you, Shannon. I can see you. I can, I can see you. Yeah? I can yeah. hear her. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Right. Go ahead, Chris. Chris, were you going to say something? Oh, he can't hear me, right? No. Do you guys hear? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not yeah, I can hear. Yeah. I can really? hear. Just go to the, let's go to the next question. Okay. Whoever can hear me, tell Chris to keep going with what he was going to say. Uh, Just refresh your page, Chris. Chris, right. Shannon says keep going if you had something to say, uh, if you're adding on to it. He's, Thanks, he's refreshing his page. So you, you yeah. go ahead. I think he answered his question for that. So. Okay. I think he was going to um, ask one of the questions off of the, um, the page that we had there. Um, and I don't know how everyone is for time, but we have nine questions in Crowdcast and uh, we have a few other questions. So it would be, are we okay to try to sneak one last one in? Sure. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Okay. There's so many good ones. Um, I think the one that I'm going to ask is what are the biggest challenges you face as a visionary artist? And what are some of the biggest challenges we are facing as a collective? And then how do you stay grounded during all of this chaos? What are those questions? I think I think the biggest challenge as a visionary artist challenge. is that uh, the the values and the ideas that visionary art plays with and communicates really brush up against the dominant culture and the general way that people see the world. So it's not it's not accepted. You know, it's it's a very underground art movement where you know, other underground art movies, even like pop surrealism, which is an underground art movement, is like hugely more popular than visionary art. And visionary art doesn't get any real mainstream acceptance by any of the art establishments. It's not really considered to be a, any kind of legitimate art movement of any value. You know? And I think that's because it's transgressive. It's a, it's a movement of personal revolution. It challenges a lot of the kind of modern assumptions about uh, spirituality and the way reality operates. You know, you're, you're introducing ideas like the concepts of uh, spiritual forces beyond the realm of our perception, 
that for most people who are kind of brought up within the postmodern society that we live in, who are more or less atheistic or agnostic, they might might think that that's too woo woo. It's too far out. They don't resonate with that. They can't understand it. You know, and also the idea that uh, God can be beheld within the mind of each person and that you can take something like a psychedelic or have an experience through meditation of spiritual transcendence. That also is counter to the systems that have been in place for a long time through organized religion and things like that. So there's a lot of these, and especially in psychology, I know you probably know, Shannon, because you've talked to a lot of psychologists through this, but psychology also, the, the institutions of psychology, they develop very slowly. You know, they change very slowly. So you have all these new ideas, transpersonal psychology with the work of, of Stan Groff and people like him who introduce these concepts that are very counter to the establishment. So it's really a, a whole shift in culture needs to occur in order for visionary art to be accepted. But I think that if you look at the history of art, there have always been art movements like, uh, you know, modernism, post-impressionism that at the time was pushed underground. It wasn't accepted by the art establishments or the mainstream because the ideas that those artists held were a bit ahead of their time. And I kind of think that visionary art is, is like that, that, you know, who knows where visionary art will be in a hundred years. And maybe it, there will be exhibitions of visionary artists in establishments like the Tate Modern or the MoMA or whatever, you know, or maybe there will be new establishments that exist that come out of it. I, I see it as something like that. Like it's a, it's a, it's the mycelium ready to, to bud and, and sprout uh, out into the consciousness of the collective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right yeah. on. Do you think I could go real quick? Cause I kind of got to get go in general. I want to see my nephew before he goes to sleep and I have to leave tomorrow morning. Yeah, so yeah. I think that one of the challenges that I um, really, I guess, experience as a visionary artist, or I think that many, the one of the bigger challenges is really like are bringing the vision in to get out of the visionary realm and to bring it into the into this realm the translation like that's a challenge you know and that's a challenge that i think is you know we have to ground ourselves and we do have to do the work we have to do the practice we have to get hum we have to humble ourselves you know become you know drop into just the 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 essence of the work you know and i think that's what we do when we create when we create, we, we become in, in service, you know? So, and there's a, there's a challenge between the lofty realms in a sense of the visionary state where you can see everything, there's no gravity, there's no, everything's all there, right? But then really to bring that into form, that takes a, that that's another degree of, of commitment, dedication, service, you know, so I see that. That's just my little contribution for now. And thank you so much, everybody. It's been so good to see awesome. you. Awesome. Thank and, you. Uh, right, Amanda Star. Amanda Star. All right. <laughs> Love you all so much. Love you. Good see you. See you soon. Damn. Simon Simon or Chor, Chris, you got three questions, right? And can you repeat the three questions again? Like, what's the challenge mm -hmm. in being a visionary artist? Yeah. And, and um, yeah, what are the biggest challenges we're, you're facing as a visionary artist? What are the, some of the challenges we may be facing as a collective? And how do you stay grounded through all of this? I think um, when it comes to challenges, I think uh, the only challenge is 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 myself myself um uh, challenging my challenging myself um and you know because i i can i, I can be the only one that, that that can get in my way if 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 i'm challenging myself if 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 i see Last chore. Last chore. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll I'll just sure. jump off on that. I think that's a really awesome statement. 
actually. I totally agree with Jake and Amanda answered really well. I actually agree with that. And and that that how, you know, our our own we're our worst critic often, you know. It happens to all of us, even if you're like successful to some degree Boom. or you're uh, <laughs> hey but <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, go ahead anyway. I'll let, yeah, yeah, you, no, you can go ahead and finish. Well, I was just jumping off what you were saying because we lost you for a second. And I, I was saying I think it's an awesome statement because we're so – like people are so hard on themselves and because we sort of we, – we come into this world and we're sort of taught to please others essentially. Like you're here to yeah. get approval from the outside world. And then you lose track of what your own true self even is. And so mm -hmm. psychedelics yeah. are – often bringing us into that alignment of seeing like who you are, who you are connected to the universe and, and, and everything. So, you know, it's finding that balance and, and having really a lot of self self love because, you know, it's like that statement of like, you can't love anyone until you fully love yourself, but it's really hard. It's really hard. Everyone struggles with it. The most successful people, you know, and sometimes it's like the higher, whatever levels of success you have, then you're comparing yourself to more successful people. You know, it's mm. why, why billionaires just want more because they're like, I need to have, need more. There's this, this hungry ghost kind of thing. So we're, we're wrestling with that a lot. And yeah. uh, that's a really, yeah. it's a really great thing to bring to this tour. Yeah. Go carry on with that then. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm my own worst enemy, me versus ten of me. Like, <laughs> challenging challenging myself you know it, it, i'm the only person that can get in my way when it comes to anything in life you know like playing this game of chess on a roller coaster ride we call life and um if if if, if i get in my way you know that's 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 putting me in a position to where um where acceptance comes into play and it's like okay do 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 i really accept myself for for who i am and what i do and what i can do and what i can provide and what i can bring to the table um should i really care what 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 is what the acceptance from outside of me brings should i really care about that you know it's, it's just asking yourself the right questions asking ourselves the right questions and you know, which leads, which leads into the collective, you know, when it comes to competition and all that shit, you know, and to me, I think that, that has brought a, a major hindrance into all communities of art, all communities of everything is when, when you, when you, when you apply pressure to it, when you mm -hmm. apply a, a competitive aspect to it, to where, you know, it's, Backed up, it's backed up by numbers. It's backed up by how much money you got. It's just backed up by. All right. Well, I guess it's my turn. Or did you guys still hear him? Maybe. I don't hear him. <laughs> Looks like we lost him again. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like I'll go off like uh, chore and you, Simon, and actually all of you guys always speak very beautifully. But um, I, the, the question when I when I first read it this morning, because we read the questions previously, is like, what's your big challenge as a visionary artist? And I was like, whoa, how could I have a challenge being a visionary artist? It's like such a blessing. Like it's all like. Being an artist in general, I always feel so blessed that I was born an artist and that it was always clear that, uh, you know, what I wanted to do was art because art is a really fun thing. It's like you're playing and then it became my job and then you're helping people and it's your activism and you're healing yourself. So art is this like one activity that just makes my life and the world better. Awesome. But now that I'm hearing you guys, it's like, well, yeah, there's the challenges of not the particular visionary artist, but just the artist in general. And if we observe what a visionary artist is, is like a spiritually minded artist, you know, somebody who's trying to kind of like transfer some kind of spiritual experience. Uh, so we're trying to be like good, good spiritual people, but we've thrown ourselves in this world of the art world, which is the ego world. 
So there is the competitiveness. There is the, I need to make money, succeed, pay my bills. So it's like a really weird juxtaposition between like, I want to be like a Zen monk just meditating and bringing forth visions of like a utopic spiritual realm. But at the same time, I kind of got to like sit on the computer and make myself look cool to everybody. If not, I'm not going to sell this shit and pay my, my rent. I know it's even going to get the medicine if I don't play the popularity game. So it's like really weird. Sometimes I just wish I could just throw my phone in the garbage, throw away my Instagram and say fuck it and just be a spiritual person and, and fuck the rest. But then another part of me is saying like, but Chris, like, you know, you got a community and you, you're feeling them good vibes they need you sacrifice yourself you know sacrifice your own enlightenment as the bodhisattva that you are if that helps them take one step closer on their path to spirituality uh, i used to do this meditation path and my guru when i had just graduated from school my guru from india could finally talk to him and i told him i was going to be an artist i was going to help the world with my happy spiritual art and he's like no 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 no. you should not be an artist too much ego too many traps too much mind in that world you should just quit that path stay here in the ashram and just meditate yourself into enlightenment and then you'll escape samsara and it was such a fucking battle in me between like oh my god all my life i wanted to be this artist superhero to help the world and here my guru is telling me that that's all bullshit, that that's like, you know, illusion, that's world, and I should just meditate myself back to soul. So then why did I even come to planet Earth to be Chris? Uh, and obviously in the end, I chose the path of being an artist anyways, and I don't regret it. Even if I do sacrifice my own alignment in this present life, that's fine. The path of the Bodhisattva is a very honorable one, and it's needed in this time where uh, we all need to, you know, Take like hold each other. Uh, what's the the Ram Das thing? Like uh, walk each other back home or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So uh, I, you know, it's a blessed path, and I'm nothing but grateful. But I guess sometimes we do sacrifice a little bit of our own spiritual comfort and sanity in order to like be these like somewhat famous uh, artists that have to answer a million emails a day and deal with. Uh, the pressures of uh, running a business because artists is more than just like, a painting. It's like a trillion dollar thing, as you guys know. So here I am sitting at my desk all day long. And I don't know how spiritual that is, but here we are doing the work <laughs> in the future. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for that, Chris. That's a, I love that answer. Can I, yeah. can I tie in? Yeah, I think we're all, we're all oh, yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Just the, the part of the question that um, didn't get said much, and I totally appreciate that, Chris, everyone's answers, is just how do you ground down into into this? How, how do you ground this? Like as a whatever, if you're into psychedelics, well, let's say psychedelics specifically because we're, we're talking about psychedelics, is how do you translate that message and be able to communicate it? And I do think, you know, the integration is such a huge, important part of, mm. of this that you know, it, it just often goes overlooked. It's like Jake was saying, he does like maybe one big dose a year. And I think a lot of us are the same. Maybe we're microdosing more now. I'm, I'm doing that as opposed to bigger doses because it is more integrative. And then just on a daily level, it's like, yeah, I do meditation and breathing work and Qigong and yoga or like being in nature. Like I got to get outside and just living healthy, like eating healthy food, trying to be healthy because it's the full balance of your being that enables really you to, to express and be in this world. And it's uh you know, there's a, there's a lot to do. So it's, it really the, it, being able to integrate those things with a healthy lifestyle, I think is, is really important. And it's not only contributing to yourself, it's your integration with, with the world and what you're choosing to, you know, consume and, and all that, you know, so yeah, I won't go on for yeah. too long because I know we're cutting short, but it's just integration. It's a key aspect. <laughs> yeah. I want to say one or two things. If we have time. You know, yeah. I have a pretty strong meditation practice that seems to really help me. Like my mind is crazy. And if I'm not on top of that shit, it goes off, you know, so I need to have a meditation practice to be able to just kind of stay centered. Otherwise, like I, I go off into these weird, you know, paranoid trips in my mind or whatever it is. And the meditation really just helps me stay present to be able to like 
feel the earth underneath my feet and not get caught up in some fantasy about the future or the past. And I think that's really important, especially because psychedelics have a tendency to take one into the mind, right? And I've learned over time, it's less about the mind stuff and it's more just about like, this is a psychedelic experience to be embodied and to be present. So I really try to actively practice bringing myself back into my body feeling the breeze against my face, feeling the the sun on my skin, whatever it is, because it's so easy to just like live and you, you, you know, three weeks go by, you don't even realize you were like sleepwalking that whole time. Uh, so that's one thing I wanted to say. And then the other thing is like make art, you know, you don't have to be a professional artist. You don't need to be trained. It's good for everybody in the world to be making art. And it's an excellent way to integrate your psychedelic experiences also. Yeah. You know, Stan Groff uses it in his holotropic breathwork therapy model where people have these transcendental experiences and then he has everybody draw their experiences. It's such a great way to be able to integrate, explore and communicate your experiences and not just through oh. psychedelics, but in, in life in general, you know, like it, I, I really, I got to encourage every single person who's listening right now that if you're inspired by any of these artists talking or just inspired by art in general, like go, go make art. Like just, it's good for you. It's as good for you as like, you know, going on walks or jogging or, or doing yoga. It's a beneficial practice for your mind, for your spirit and for your soul. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jake. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like we have a chore back. Chore, did you um, want to say anything else on that topic? Or do you have any final words for us? Oh, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. uh, no, we lost. Oh. we lost. Oh, no. It looks like we lost again. All right. Uh, well, while we're waiting for him to uh, come back, um, Chris, did you want to say anything on that topic as well on grounding? Grounding, um, I like the ground. Ground's pretty good. I agree with it. I awesome. vote for ground. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how did you go? Uh, I like to skateboard. That uh, has been great for me to get out of my mind. Uh, art, of course, is great, but like when you're an artist, it's almost like you know the fifty other things that I was mentioning before around art take over and art, uh, you know, there's less and less time to actually like paint at night when you get a, a break or on the weekends. But yeah, I've made more time to like go out skateboarding and I fucking love it. Especially when, not especially when I fall, but there's something about falling that brings that presence that uh, Jake was saying, like you can like, you know, sometimes not be so uh, present in your existence. But when you're skateboarding, if you're not present, you eat shit and that eating shit kind of like slaps in the face me like whoa dude like you weren't present you weren't on point you know you start being awake in every single moment or you're gonna eat more shit and it's just a metaphor for for all of life you know like make every word and step and action that you do one that's coming from your the presence of you and hopefully your the higher sense of you um and if we all do that as humans, I think we got a better chance. Absolutely. Well, guys, it looks like we are um, a little bit over time here. Oh, 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 hold up, hold up. One minute. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, what go ahead. Go last ahead. thing. Um, just be. Sweet and simple. <laughs> Just be. Um, does anyone else want to say any final words before we um, before we tune off here? Well, thank you so much, Shannon. Thank you so much to Maps. Uh, I think the work of Maps and you guys is very important because what the fuck are these medicines from nature that awaken humanity? How come they're illegal? Uh, and it's 2020 and we're just like, hey, maybe we should uh, decriminalize these things that grow from the land that uh, help us realize our higher sense of being like, yeah. And 
guess we gotta like jump a bunch of hoops in this crazy modern world full of boxes and uh thank you for being part of that that's why we back you up and hope you raise some money through these uh you know crazy artists talking today and uh yeah may all all psychedelics be liberated but also may all of us individuals be responsible enough to take in in uh responsible uh settings that are um you know uh, that, that don't rock our, our our wigs you know like let's not blow our wigs out and uh you know let's not harm ourselves uh, by doing it in the wrong time wrong place let's make it always a ceremony you know let's always bring that presence and and the responsibility and respect that's the, the r word i was looking for all this time <laughs> respect <laughs> like then uh, respect for all of you guys and much love to my artist friends here yeah buddy. you guys are great thank you for the work that you do yeah. <laughs> all right right on brother thanks a lot yeah much yeah. love everybody and thanks shannon i just want to say it's a great time you know if you're listening to this and you're inspired by these artists now is such a great time to to explore and to dive into an art practice and it can be really i understand because i work with you know students who are trying to develop a creative practice and it can be really really scary for people especially if you have negative you know traumas or blocks around it but like just do it and like we're all here together you know reach out to any one of us and send us what you're making like you know i believe in you i believe if you're inspired i believe in your potential as an artist to be able to to express yourself and it feels so good and it's fun and it's part of this ongoing conversation also around what this psychedelic experience is and we're all able to t tap into this creative source together through this so yeah i just really encourage anybody here to explore their creativity you know even if they that you don't have any experience in it it's fun it's healthy it's great you'll love it i promise <laughs> yeah yeah and just what those guys said and just another reiteration of like please people look into maps if you haven't much we really appreciate the work they're doing and being able to study these things and make them more legit to the bring them onto the table and uh and all all the research and consider a donation if you appreciate what these uh, medicines are doing consider the work they're doing is extremely important in in getting them out into the world so much love to maps and everyone here Thanks so much. Thank you, Shannon. <laughs> well, it looks like we've lost Ed Shore again. So we'll see if we, we get him back within the next couple of seconds. But I just wanted to say a super big thank you to all of you, to Simon, Jake, Chris, Amanda, Chore. Um, you guys are making a huge difference in the world with the work and what you're doing. So, you know, keep doing what you're doing, shining your light. And, um, and hopefully we can have you back very soon. So... We really appreciate you being here today and a super big thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Shannon. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, Chris. Dad. Thanks, Just Simon. Thank you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. And for everyone watching, thanks for tuning in. As you guys know, the funds from the webinar go to this very important research. And our next webinar is next Tuesday at 5 PST with Ifateo Harvey. And um, it's going to be another good one. So see everyone soon. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, well, thanks. Bye, Thor. Thanks. <laughs> oh, my God. Now we're back. So, bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Maps. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for being who you are and, you know, creating around the world and, you know, inspiring people. And, you know, you guys are amazing. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and if anybody is interested in, you know, plant medicines, we're going to be throwing um, retreats at a retreat center, uh, Sun River retreats in Costa Rica and art retreats too modern hieroglyphics art retreats in Costa Rica. So everybody's invited. And um, yeah, you can just, you know, I guess there'll be details how, on how to reach us, so. Awesome, yeah, we're gonna collect all these links and send them out in a newsletter within the next couple of days so you guys will have access to all this. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Awesome, well, thanks again, everyone, much love. All right, peace. <laughs>